when I first moved here, about a week and a half into it, I let my dogs out about 3.30 in the morning. My dog, who's probably about five months old, he kind of does react to different things in his surroundings, which he's learning. So that's just to be expected. He was darting towards our fence line and he was looking at our fence line as if something was there. He was sensing something because he stuck his nose up. So I just kind of stayed in the doorway of our back porch, which that area is fenced in. And we are surrounded. We are on well over 100 acres of forest. There's no one else around us. So it's very desolate. And then all of a sudden I heard the, the deepest blood-curdling howl. It was extremely hard to explain unless you were physically listening to it. Even to this day, I can't explain the sound unless you hear it because there's nothing in the world to compare it to. It's very hard to compare. So that morning I put on a YouTube and I was comparing a bear and a Bigfoot and I was like, it's definitely not a bear. And that's the only sound that it's it, it was it was blood curdling like it, it made me so scared. And it, it was it was further enough away to where it echoed, but it lasted about seven to ten seconds. And it felt like he had the longest lung span. And I was I told my husband, I said, I am not about to stand out here and figure out what that sound was because I felt like it belonged on a, a paranormal movie in a sense because it was so scary sounding. Now, my dog did not bark. It was, I don't know, it's really hard to explain because you would think that the dogs would have reacted to the sound and the, the noise. My dog barks at everything and he did not bark. He did not make the slightest noise. I feel like he was just kind of stunned by it. We then, we have walking trails in our, our forest back here that we just started clearing out. We pushed all the, you know, branches to the side and we started making walking paths. And I started noticing, because we have very hard sand here. So it's, you can't stick stuff in the dirt easily. I started no, noticing very deep imprints, which I started marking you can't put casts in them just because the sand is so hard to put anything in. So I'm surprised there's actually footprint markings. And all of my broken trees started getting knocked down, which was weird because we're not in there doing that. And then maybe a week and a half ago, and we went outside and there was pulled off bark on that tree right next to her room, kind of about maybe... 40 to 50 yards to the left of her room, there was fresh bark that was ripped off the tree, almost as if a deer took his antlers and like ripped the bark off within that same area where was her hearing the banging noises on the tree. And I have about two almost grapefruit size holes on the side of my house inside of the the paneling on the side of my house which wasn't there before which was really odd to me and then aside from hearing not random knocking noises and my husband did actually hear the howling another time when he was on the porch with my brother and he they it scared them. They had to actually let off two rounds of their gun to maybe to scare it off because it just kept approaching closer. And it was just not a howl that they had heard before. And coming from Texas, we're used to coyotes, we're used to mountain lions, we're used to all of those sounds. And it's just not something that you hear on a regular basis. I haven't physically caught anything on camera and I've been truly trying. I need to get some audio out there in my deer cam, but it's just a lot of things that we've heard. I really need to get something with audio to see if I hear things because it's mostly common. I've come to find in the middle of the night or really early in the morning mm -hmm. is when the most activity happens. Our driveway is a quarter mile long, so it's very, we're way up there and we the driveway goes straight and it forks. So when I say we're we're way up there in the mountains, we're way up there in the mountains. On the 4th of July, it was midday. 
they were tree knocking and doing howls to see if there was a response. Way off in the distance, they heard what sounded like tree knocking back. And initially, they were like, maybe it's fireworks because it is the 4th of July, but it was also the afternoon. So it wasn't something that could have been expected. So they did experience that too. And all of this was within a span of, we've lived here a month and a half now. So it's just a lot of activity. The previous owner sold it quick. They just up and left and sold it and moved out of state. I am able to... They still contact that original owner, so they do still have contact with them. I personally don't. An investor bought the property, and we we just so happened to buy that from them. We have a lot of activity. The tracks were the one that I had that I did find. The foot span. I feel like if I take a giant step forward, I still wouldn't be able to reach that second footprint. It would have been a way bigger reach. And I'm 5'4", my husband's 5'10", and he still couldn't get that right foot into that position that it was in. And I've seen deer prints. I've seen fresh deer tracks because we have a lot of deer out here. And it wasn't that. We have bobcats. It wasn't a bobcat print. This was a human footprint, but magnified. It was large. And it was just kind of like something that you wouldn't be able to notice unless you casted it. But since the ground is so hard, we we put out some deer stands and we're going to see if we can maybe sit out there in the night and see if we hear anything. We have these random, I don't know if they're dens or what they are, but there's these giant mounds of dirt and they're just, they look like something would have been in there and i'd have about three of them on our property and it's just i'm not sure i don't even want to go in there to be honest but they're all covered up with dirt now but it's just the most random shaped almost bear den looking thing and i'm like okay (laughs) this is wild too as to why those would be there because they're just oddly placed and it's just not something that somebody would just create out of nowhere there's openings to them so it's just like humped over so if you were to have an igloo but instead of the igloo beaming it out ice it's dirt so that's kind of what it looks like and there was an opening at one point which has since been covered over with sticks and brush and leaves and whatever kind of is in the wilderness over there and broken down trees so it's just weird to me that there's so many randomly placed throughout the property my house was in 40 to 50 yards of the walking trail that we created they're not they're not very far at all which is very strange to me i haven't really tried to listen or look for anything in about a week and a half because to me i was like nobody's gonna believe me i don't want people to think i'm crazy or i'm just trying so hard to find something that i'm just thinking something there that isn't so i was just kind of going about my day going to sleep not even going in i don't even go into the woods anymore and check the trails let me put some raspberries out here because i've heard that you can put random objects they're curious they like to look for things so put a little container of raspberries that have since, you know, were old. And the raspberry container was on top of the deer stand. The raspberry container the next day was off the deer stand, completely empty, maybe a few yards away on top of a tree. I don't think a deer will climb up a deer stand to get that. My husband thought it was, thought it would be neat to try to put a little old celsius can in between a tree to see if maybe they it would something would grab it it's still there so that hasn't moved however the raspberries did move i heard loud banging and i was like okay you know let's go out and look and there was two holes on the side of my house as if it was hit by something but it's very high up so it would have had to have been maybe a piece of wood fell and hit it and put a hole through it because it's i would not have been able to reach up there 
it was almost in between the first story and the second story. And there's a tree there. And that's the tree that I saw was fresh bark was pull, pulled off the tree and just hanging there, which was really odd to me as well. And so I'm not sure if something's kind of lingering in this area because we have all the deer, we have corn growing right in the area. We have a big old pond. So there's a water source and it's surrounded by nothing but brush. So it's very easy to hide. So I'm just not sure if something's lingering within this vicinity just for those reasons. But you, they're within, so they're kind of diagonal from each other. They're not right next to each other. So one is a little bit lower, top left, there's another one. So it was two different holes. Something was hitting the house. Today, it was weird. Today, I walked and I was like, you know what? Let me just go through the property and just see. I haven't tried to. I was just trying to go about my day. I didn't think to look for anything in the last week and a half. It's just kind of one of those scenes where it's like, it's not something that you can just go out in public and just talk to everybody about because I feel like they'll look at you and be like, you know, she's crazy. <laughs> and I live very close to the El Dorado outpost there in Uori, which I guess there was firsthand accounts there as well. So I li I live within miles of that. So I'm pretty close. The El Dorado outpost is completely dedicated to Bigfoot. And they did Bigfoot hunting there a while back. And it was actually a whole new story. And they have books about it. It's very common. And I guess the gentleman that owned it previously had very, very good firsthand accounts. And I'm almost certain he caught some stuff on camera. I think that's when the History Channel came out and they did a whole new story about it too. And I'm within probably 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes from that location. So I'm very close. So today I went on my walking trail, just kind of looking to see if I see anything. All of my trees are all broken, all the small ones. And they're all laying perfectly in the same direction. It was very weird. And I don't remember that being that many broken branches within facing the exact same way. I can understand if there's a storm, trees fall, branches break all the time. But all laying flat in the same exact direction as if they were pushed over in that same way was just very odd to me. So I called my neighbor and I said, hey, you know, let me get a fresh pair of eyes. Can you come over here? You've been in these trails before. Can you tell me if maybe I'm just overthinking it or if you think that there's more trees down? He's like, no, there's a lot more trees down than there was before. And these are all, we have pines and giant oaks and these are all, you know, kind of daintier. And they're all just smashed flat in the same direction and I just thought that to be very odd a couple of weeks ago probably within two weeks of us moving here my brother and my husband were sitting on the porch probably late evening 10 o'clock ish 9 10 o'clock we had just gotten over a barbecue so they were just kind of sitting out there socializing and this was after I heard my howling and I feel like they didn't really believe me. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those things you have to experience it to know. They were just sitting out there and they heard that howling that I was trying so hard to explain to them. And my brother at first was like, no, it's the dogs because my neighbors have huskies. And my husband's like, that's not a dog. And they were like, maybe it's a coyote. We're like, we're from Texas. We had coyotes on the property. They sound like little baby puppies, kind of. They don't sound like this. So it kept, he said it kept getting closer and closer to him to where it made him very uncomfortable. So he, he, he went and got his gun because it made him uncomfortable. He's like, something's going to attack us. And he had to fire off two rounds to, to scare it away because it was getting that close. And I'm like, it's crazy that it feels so comfortable to come right up to your house almost bought the property and it was remodeled but I think it was a good 
six months to a year that it was left unoccupied. So there's still some type of activity um, within the vicinity. So when we first moved in, there was a ton of grown up vegetation, brush, all kind of branches just kind of, you know, shoved in the the walking trail that we had created. And we didn't know half of that was there because we couldn't get in. We actually had a lot of those trees and brush and branches removed. And that whole area is now exposed. And we, there's a giant, it looks like they took an excavator and just kind of brushed whatever was left in this house into the woods. So we slowly started clearing out the couches and whatever other stuff they just kind of shoved in there. But I don't know if maybe we just upset something or they're like, hey, this is where I was hiding because we removed all of the trees and branches and brush that were kind of blocking those trails. And now they're just all exposed. So we're able to just kind of walk through there now and just get our evening strolls in. And I don't know what may have happened. Now we took an excavator and we cleared out a path so it's completely clean to see if maybe we catch any type of footprints. And that next day, that's when I had caught those footprints. And then all the whole trail that we had just cleaned completely was covered in leaves everywhere. And it wasn't storming that previous night. It wasn't windy that day. It was just all, it was just covered in leaves and branches. And I know for a fact, we had just cleared that out with the, you know, the plow. So it's just odd. And then lo and behold, right there is where I saw those two tracks. There was only two but I was able to see them and that foot span was just large, the indent of the toes. I was able to tell that it was a foot. The ones where the foot span is large, there's only an indent and you can kind of see the curve like on a human foot where it kind of curves in in the center. You're not able to meet out. It's kind of rounded, so it's more of like a shape. It wasn't as big of a foot, but it was You could tell it was something of an imprint with individual little round. They were rounded. They weren't elongated like a human style. They were more rounded at the top. The only thing, there is a video on YouTube, and that's the only way that I can compare it to. When I first heard the noise, and that's, I woke up at 7 a.m. that morning, and I was just like, I've got to figure out what this sound was because it's nothing I'd Mm -hmm. heard before. I, I played the bear, the bear sound. It's like, this is deep and it sounds like it, but it's not long enough. Like this, this howl is long and drawn out. It's like, it wasn't a bear. And I played this sound of this hunter where it's, he was going mushroom hunting and he heard this Bigfoot. And that's this, it was, I, when I say it was identical to what I heard, no, this is what we heard. We went on a walk one day. Actually, I we went on a walk one day and we were playing that sound. And, you know, let's just play the sound. Let's just play the sound. So we were walking down our driveway and something in the distance howled back after we played that sound. And my husband, I looked at my husband. I said, you did hear that this time, right? And he's like, yes, (laughs) I actually heard it this time. So it was just, that was interesting. I'm really scared to go outside in the woods now. Like it has me that scared to go out at night just because I don't know if it's something that's upset or angry or if it's lingering around. If there's one, maybe two. I don't know. I'm just really, the tree knocking was a big one. The tree knocking on the 4th of July. Maybe it's the neighbors playing, you know, messing with y'all. And or maybe it's the maybe it's fireworks because it kind of sounded like fireworks from a distance. Just like pop, pop, pop. Because it it wasn't. It was like 12 in the afternoon. So it's not something. The con- We do have a country club not too far from here. But it's it's just way too far off. And they would not have been doing that at that time. So I'm like, oh, it could have been this or, you know, maybe it was this. I turned my phone off. It wasn't vibrations. I heard tree knocking. We moved in the end of May. So here it is, the middle of July. And within that time frame, all of this has happened. And I was thinking, you know, 
animals, but I feel like this is too much of a coincidence for all of this to happen. I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. I feel like it's too coincidental for it not to be a Bigfoot. I feel like all of the evidence is there and it's pointing in that direction. 